Howdy folks, Mike here, Prado 150 out of here. Now you're probably wondering why on earth am I sitting in my caravan in the front yard? Well, let me say that I have got it plugged into the power just at the moment on the 240. Now I am running the air conditioner because it is stinking hot outside and I have to say that it's uh, cooled this place, this caravan down very nicely. Now I uh, just wanted to run through a couple of things that don't go away. Um, so just wanted to say I'm actually up to 8,000 subscribers can you believe that I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that I would get to 8,000 subscribers so I just want to say thank you everyone uh, for your support in that if this is the first video that you're watching on my channel you've come across it uh, don't go away because um, I've got a few things to explain um, but take a look at my other other videos and uh, hopefully there is some there that would be of interest to you. Obviously we have the Prado, the Prado 150. A lot of my videos are about that, but I do have a family and kids and we do heaps of full driving and camping together. So that brings me to my next point, talking about the Jayco Crosstrack. Now this Friday, okay, this is a video not to be missed. So you may have a Jayco Crosstrack, you may have a hybrid van or just a caravan. I'm going to walk you through some very exciting extras that I have put in this van. So that is not to be missed. Thank you to Max Caravans or Caravan Centre in Glenvale here in Toowoomba. They have been amazing and I'm just going to go through everything that they do and putting a few uh, mods on, you know, if you'd call it that, just a few extras into the van. And I'm going to show you where you can put these things because some I've had a few questions about where to put some of these items. I won't tell you too much about it, but stay tuned Friday. The video goes live at 4.30 p.m. Now, if you are interested in watching that now, you can't wait because it is very exciting. It's a very exciting video and you want to watch it ad-free, so that means no YouTube ads because I've turned them off at the moment. You can go onto my Patreon page and have a look and it's on there so just that's what's coming up uh, also uh, Josh and I we're going camping this weekend and that just another little point that I wanted to uh, wanted to raise is that um, I don't know about you guys but you know things happen in life different things and they change your perspective or outlook on life and always getting that work-life balance I don't know about you but it is definitely a challenge and if you throw in the mix of a few other challenges in your family you know whether it's uh, medical or you know just teenagers all that kind of stuff it becomes a challenge and then of course you know trying to earn a living pay the bills all that kind of stuff so anyway uh, my Prado it's having a bit of a, a rest at the moment uh, I'll just go through that with you in a moment what's going to be happening uh, with my Prado so um, I went to Joshua and I said, mate, I think it's about time you took me camping. Okay, I'm going to jump in with you in the BT-50 and we're just going to do some basic camping. So, you know, I'm going to take my swag and we're just going to go somewhere. We're going to film it. Um, probably we're looking at going to Queen Mary Falls because it's not too far away and there's plenty of water happening at the moment. Might even do the 14 river crossings. I'll get Joshua to uh, take me through. So. That's coming up too. Uh, that'll be on a video uh, coming up too. But the point of the what I'm trying to say is that you've got to spend time with your kids. If you've got kids, teenagers, they grow up so quick. And I'm learning that any possible moment that you can spend some good quality time with them, make sure you do it. And uh, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else, but um, I, I've had that mindset of late, and uh, that's you know what I'm going to be doing. So the Prado now. The Prado, uh, I've put a few things out on Instagram about the Prado, and uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, too worried about it. However, though, I do watch. Uh, there's a YouTuber called Four x Four Diesel. He's the Prado doctor, Prado Hospital uh, in Melbourne, and he's got some awesome videos on uh, on the Prado. I've been watching that uh, his videos for many, many years. Learned a lot of stuff 
uh, about my Prado. And then I came across Dan, Dan from Dan's Automotive. And he, uh, or he's closer than obviously uh, the guy from Melbourne. And uh, coupled with, um, you know, with the, the YouTube videos and uh, from Dan, um, it's absolutely been awesome. So that brings me to my injectors. So my car, or the Prado's done 263,000 kilometers to be precise. And uh, I, look, to be honest, um, I'm probably uh, expecting a bit too much. I was hoping to get beyond 300,000 uh, on it. Uh, Dan had a car in there, a Prado, that had done 400,000 Ks on the one set of injectors. And it was in to get the injectors changed. So I suppose I was, I don't know, a little bit hopeful uh, about getting some more mileage out of it. but probably a really silly idea so the, it, it sounds like the injectors are, are noisy they're becoming noisy and uh, there's a few little rattles and things going on so look um, one of you guys uh, on Instagram you did tell me that you just did yours at 260,000 so that got me like yeah okay so I think it's about time I've got the big trip coming up uh, going over to Perth or going to WA and doing a massive trip over there uh, coming up in about seven weeks time so definitely don't want anything to happen while especially while you're on a nullar ball so I'm gonna bite the bullet I'm giving the Prado a bit of a rest at the moment I've got Dan booked in uh, towards the end of the month and uh, we're gonna do a full uh, overhaul of the Prado so you know timing belts due at 300,000 Ks anyway uh, so I'm gonna do a water pump brand new water pump I'm gonna get a new viscous fan um, I'm also going to uh, obviously get the new injectors, going to put the kit through it. It does have a bit of an oil leak that I'm just quietly, I'm a little bit worried about. Uh, there's a few options where it might be coming from and one of those options isn't a good option. So <laughs> anyway, I'm just being out there, just being honest with you at the moment. So I'm not driving the Prado. Uh, fortunately, I have a motorbike. So I'm uh, driving that around or riding that around, I should say, at the moment. So I don't want any crack pistons or anything like that. So, I'll, you know, new uh, injectors is a lot cheaper than buying a new engine for it. And I really love the Proto. I really love that three liter. Uh, I'm not changing it over anytime soon. Uh, I don't have any plans for that or there's no budget for that at the moment. So um, yeah, I just want to let you know, of course, we're gonna do a video on it. Uh, um, I'm gonna have to cut the talking too much because it's a big job. Dan already said it will probably be a day and a half uh, to do all those items. Whacking a light bar on the uh, on the roof rack, so that's going to be good. Um, so we're all going to be all prepared for this, uh, I reckon it's about 15,000k trip that I'm going to be doing. And uh, it's going to be awesome because I'm going to do it with Ruben from DMW. He's bringing his camera crew as well, so we're going to share a bit of the footage. And I uh, can't wait. It's always good to have other people um, come with you on those kind of trips. And of course... I'm gonna have my family with me as well at different parts, different uh, different people, oh, different people. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to say is that Shelly's gonna be flying there with um, Chloe. Uh, uh, Lachlan's coming with me on the road trip over. Uh, he'll be flying back. Josh is flying over later, so he's gonna do a, a second part of the trip. So it's all, it's all gonna be happening. I can't wait, we're looking forward to it. I'm taking the Jayco cross track with me. That's why we've been doing a few uh, few things to it to get it ready. So um, look, it's going to be absolutely uh, an extraordinary trip. Um, look, to be quite honest, sometimes, uh, sometimes, I wonder if I've taken a bit too much than I can chew. I, you know that. You know when you, I don't know. Shelley always tells me that everyone's like this, but sometimes, you know, when you wake up, you just wake up in the middle of the night. I, I don't do it too often, but every now and again, you just wake up. And you start, I don't know if worrying's the word, but you just start going over things. And you, you know, it's dark, it's night time, and uh, the, some of the thoughts go, you know, what happens if something goes wrong while you're over there? What happens if, uh, have you got the money to, you know, to fix something? What happens if you're on a track and, you, and a major thing happens to your car, or you break a CV? I've got no idea how to change CVs, maybe I should learn. Um, you know, all those, all those things just start playing in your head. Um, what if something happens to the to the caravan? Uh, you know, I don't want to wreck it for Shelley. All these little things start to you know go through your head, and you wake up and you just go, you snap it out of you, and go, no way, we're doing it. We're just doing it. I said, I don't care what it costs. Uh, we've got airfares left, right, and centre, and uh, it's just a, a lifetime opportunity. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. Why I'm in the caravan is that. Um, 
I just wanted to uh, show you guys something because there's been a lot of um, you know questions comments all that kind of stuff so as you know I've got one of those uh, power stations from uh, iTech world okay so one of the items I've installed into this van which will be more on that on Friday is the iTech world inverter so there's a 3000 watt inverter um, I won't give away too much for Friday but it, it, it's an awesome product it, it's it runs the air conditioner it's not running it at the moment because I have got it on the power it does suck obviously a bit of juice but what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to turn the air conditioning off I'm going to unplug the power and I'm going to turn on the inverter here and I haven't done this yet so you're getting it live you're getting it raw because um, we do have a big trip and I'm taking the power station with me because we are going to do some camping away from the van we're going to leave the van somewhere and you know do a couple days uh, just in the swag so the power station would be an awesome product to take but now I've got the inverter in here one of the things that I found with the power station and other people have as well because they've made you know comments to me is that it's very hard to get the power back in okay so uh, when you're driving along in the car that there's no, you, it's not like it's a DC you know you got a DC DC charger and you're pumping in 40 amps of power uh, to bring it back up it, it does it works fine on the solar if you've if you've parked up for a couple of days plug the solar in no worries at all so what I want to do or try out today folks is that um, particularly thinking of this big trip because I don't have an inverter in in the car is I'm gonna plug because when you plug this into the 240 volts and charge it up and she's pump it in you know 1100 watts um, and they say from pretty much from flat it'll charge it in an hour and a half 90 minutes so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to simulate as if we're out on the you know camping on the Nullarbor and um, I need to get the, the power station charged up of course I've got solar on the on the top as well so that'll replenish these batteries and I'm going to see how it goes charging this up so I'll just have a look here um, see what the percentage is don't want my coffee sitting there so um, just have a look there folks, what, oh it's on 89% so that'll be enough to, so it's on 89% 80, here so that'll be enough just to um, check it out, see how it goes, don't worry about my coffee, I'll just get my coffee sitting there and um, I'll give you, um, I'll give you a demonstration, I've got it plugged in, so it's plugged in but it's not turned on so you can see it's plugged into the, um, where are we now, I'm plugged into the power point over here, alright so she's plugged in and uh, we'll, I'll go and turn the power off outside and the aircon and we'll see what uh, see what happens all right folks so I've turned the inverter on okay it's a 3000 watt inverter I've just got a fan running in the background to keep me cool um, I've got the lights on so that uh, you know they reckon good lighting for when you're doing some uh, filming so I've got the lighting going um, so I'm going to go over here and, and just turn on the power point and we're going to see what's what's happening so what I'm looking at is I'm going to be looking at how much power is going because this tells you how much power is going in when you're charging and I'm going to look on uh, what's going on uh, with the you know with the batteries uh, in the cross track so um, bear with me I'll just go and turn on the switch and we'll see what happens eh? Alright folks, so here we are, I've got this turned on and uh, I'll just go and reach over here I'll turn this on, I'll just see what happens, eh? So she's on and uh, as you can see she's powering up so 89% that means that it's doing a supercharge uh, this will drop down to... so it'll go up slowly when it's... Uh, when that reaches about the 90% I, I have noticed it for protection of the battery it just slows it down a bit so there we go she's creeping up uh, 551 watts it's uh, charging at so uh, yeah so I just wanted to see how it went so when it's at 90 percent the battery management system of here for this for the uh, iTech World power station slows down the charge so um, I maybe it would have been better if I had got that underneath the 90% you're seeing this rule you know guys so um, 
but the point of the matter is I wanted to see how we could charge this um, you know being on the road from from the uh, from here so we have a look over here it's funny hey so it's drawing 555 watts there is solar coming in as well so um, that just gives you the balance between the solar and what it's taking and then well this battery is pretty much full anyway so um, and if we go across here um, it's charging yeah putting it at 550 watts so that's working look at that um, and 25 minutes it'll be charged so folks if you had this on the solar so a 200 watt solar blanket if you're lucky to put it in the middle of the day okay uh, you you would probably get um, you know your 150 maybe watts out of it uh, on a 200 watt solar blanket um, so this is if you got if you got the van and you're doing a, a big trip this is definitely uh, would be definitely one of the ways that you could uh, you know charge it up because the solar is obviously replenishing uh, the house batteries in the in the van so anyway I'll let, let that go for a good five or ten minutes and um, I'll get back to you and let you know where we're at it with it Well folks, just checking in again, uh, it's only been a couple of minutes, so everything's working perfectly. The only thing that uh, is wrong in here is that it's a hot day outside and um, it's starting to heat up a little bit. So uh, I'm going to leave it, it says 22 minutes to be charged, so let's leave it for 20 minutes. I'll come back and, and uh, check it and have a look and see if we can get this thing to 100%. Um, so look, just a little bit of information to uh, help you guys that were interested in uh, about the uh, power station how it worked how you could charge it uh, the shortcomings there's not very many shortcomings I tell you the only the only issue that I'm solving here is getting the you know replacing the the power that you're using this thing did run the air conditioner in the Jayco um, before I put the inverter in here so Well, folks, I've just uh, popped back in just to see how it's all going in here, apart from it being a little bit warm. So I'll just show you. Uh, it's on 99%. says it's got six minutes to go before it's at 100%. So uh, I'll just show you the screen and uh, see what it's doing, and we'll show you how the batteries are going on the, on the van. Uh, yeah, well, so far so good. I'm very impressed. So, yeah, six minutes to go to 100%. Um, and look, you know, just imagine oh, we're out on the Nullarbor uh, camping somewhere, and you know, I've been using the say the power station for a bit, and I want to charge it up. And this is uh, a very quick way. Here we go. It's just reached 100% just as we're uh, sitting here. So I think it's just doing that um, where it's the charge has been slowing down. A little bit just to um, assist with the long-term jeopardy obviously of the battery and uh, yeah she's just sitting on 100% still charging though it says it's got five minutes to go um, so I imagine that it'll just slow it right down and uh, down to a, a bit of a trickle charge so uh, I'll just turn the camera around and I'll show you what the display is showing so folks if you can see that so there we go it's 100% uh, it's still pumping in 408 uh, watts there, so um, that's fine. It says it's got five minutes to go. That's probably just the, to complete it. Now it's got four minutes to go. It's got a little fan there going, so it is pretty warm in here. So that's uh, looking after itself. So you can see the watts. It's just dropped down to 392 uh, there. So um, so look, it's just an idea, just a, a different way of, of you know charging, a very quick way of charging, in fact. And, uh, you know, the, the sun's obviously putting the power back into the, or the solar, back into these batteries. There's no issues there. And um, it's a very quick way to charge. I know it was only down to 89%, um, but it's more about the, the idea of it. Obviously, if you, you know, if you had it down to 50%, it would be a nice quick way to get, get it back up. You obviously wouldn't, you probably wouldn't charge it up at night time. Uh, you probably only use this kind of setup or procedure. 
uh, you know, during the day when there's solar going, um, because, uh, you know, you don't want to wake up in the morning and have 20% left on your batteries here, because uh, this is 160 watts. Sorry, I'll just say that again. <laughs> um, so this it's 160 amp hour battery in that, and I've got 240 total here. So if that was flat, or you know, we needed 160 amp hours, we're going to um, pretty much take quite a huge chunk out of these house batteries in the in the van. So um, you, you know, you want to obviously be a little bit careful, but I just wanted to demonstrate a different way of charging up this uh, power station. Well folks, there you have it. I'll just leave it there. Now don't forget, uh, I'm just going to pop up on the screen some other videos uh, for you to, to have a look at. And uh, look, don't forget this Friday uh, is going to be an absolutely awesome video, particularly you guys that have vans, whether it be, like I said, the Crosstrack or some type of hybrid, uh, and you're looking at where to put certain things, uh, well, we've got an answer uh, for you coming up this Friday, so don't miss it. I'm going to put it live at 4.30 in the afternoon on Friday, and um, there's going to be heaps of information. The guys at Max Caravans are absolutely awesome people and uh, I've got another product that I want to show you as well that we've put in the van so I, I won't let the cat out of the bag at the moment and uh, yeah just take a look at what else I've got there and um, I've got to say if you can't see that I'm excited I can't wait seven weeks time we're heading off uh, to WA so it's going to be absolutely awesome anyway so thanks guys for your support and uh, yeah we'll see you on the next video Well, folks, I couldn't end the video without showing you this 100%. There we go, fully charged, awesome. <laughs>